let's talk about I mean, we're already onto it a little bit, but I want to talk a little about methodology with regard to like, not just why you decide to write this book about the entirety of the Soul War, but also that um, there have been recently a couple of new books with like um, Silver and Browning writing about that, mm -hmm. um, the environmental history of the Soul War. Um, Aaron Maldine had written something recently about it. Um, but you decided to go with the metrology aspect rather than the environmental, even though you do bring environmental every now and then into the, the conversation. Um, so in part, maybe kind of differentiate between these two, why, how, how the metro metrological study is different from an environmental study and why you went for the kind of the, met um, the weather study instead of kind of the somewhat fashionable kind of currently environmental history. Well, they obviously overlap. I mean, there's some overlap there. I don't just write about weather. I end up writing a lot about soil, mud. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an example. I end up talking about the terrible experiences of, of draft animals. So that's another aspect of environmental history. But I think I, I think I wrote it this way for a couple of reasons. First, I'm, I'm really not trained as an environmental historian. And I actually thought there were probably better people out there to do that. Uh, Browning and Silver being two. Um, Aaron, uh, Megan Kate Nelson had preceded me, Lisa Brady, obviously, uh, Katie Shively, um, had all created this, this form, this, this at least rough draft of what environmental Civil War history was going to look like. And I think all of us at a certain point go back to an essay that Jack Temple Kirby wrote about 20 years ago when he called for civil war historians and environmental historians to actually start talking to each other. And he listed several things that those historians should be looking at. Well, most of the things on Kirby's list were being done. I mean, Megan Nelson writes about the destruction of forests, for example. Um, but it struck me that that weather was an area that nobody was really following up on too much. That there was there was there was an opening there that needed to be filled. Uh, so that's why I, I decided to do it that way. I think I think you have done a full environmental history of the entire war as I did really would have turned into a two or three volume book. Mm -hmm. um, I love I love the Silver and Browning book. Um, I've, you know, we the three of us worked with each other quite a bit as we were writing these books. I hope you didn't use napkins like they did for like their planning. <laughs> I have no napkins, no. Five by eight cards. As the late Bud Robertson taught me at Virginia Tech, they are sacred to me we use five by eight cards. Um, I mean, their approach is really interesting. They take one environmental topic per chapter. So the weather chapter is 1862. Well, you know, weather was really important in 1862. Uh, it's an approach. I just wanted to approach it differently. And I think to have um, tried to do a full environmental history would have ended with a much longer book and one that would have taken me a lot longer to write. And plus, I will say at the end, if we go back to the first thing I said in this, in this interview, uh, I have a really close personal relationship with weather and it it just interests me um so i guess that's why i mean the methodology obviously overlaps and a lot of the sources overlap but i think it's as we tell our historiography students at auburn it is a a more narrow topic but i did it much more deeply 